Welcome back to a brand new no BS crypto news video where I bring you all the crypto news in the most no BS way possible every single day. Now guys, strap yourselves in because I tell you what, this is a very important news update today. We have not one, not two, but three different sets of predictions coming through from large institutions in the space and what they forecast for 2024. Spoiler alert, some big things on the horizon. 2024 is shaping up to be crypto's biggest year by far as ever happened before. Now, in addition to that, we also have some Bitcoin mining updates as well, what those miners are doing, which could indicate a sell-off. We also have some hacks that have happened and also news relating to tax and how you can pay the least amount possible this financial year in the most legal way possible. Let me just disclose that. So with all that out the way, let's now begin by taking a very quick look at the Bitcoin or crypto heat map. And in this case, while there is a lot of red, most of these coins aren't really down too much. They aren't up much and they aren't down too much. So there really isn't too much we can speak about. So I want to move over here to the top gainers and losers of the day. And again, there really isn't too much happening here. I do have one example in a moment that I really want to point out because it blew my mind when I, when I saw this happen in real time earlier on. So we have one inch Clayton, Filecoin and BSV up the most today. FTX, Wuru, Pancake Swap and Injective are all down ever so slightly. And again, considering these are the largest gainers today, I wouldn't really consider this a bad day at all. Now, the situation I wanted to point out here before we move on to the news is a very important point I want you to remember as we go into the bull run here. This is why it isn't a good thing when your projects are mainly heavily invested into by large whales, okay? Distribution and investing are very important things we have to remember. This is a project called Teller, a competitor to Chainlink and also a competitor to Pith Network. It's an oracle. And these guys up at the start of the day were basically around $250, $260 per token. They propelled all the way up to $625. They went from like a 500 billion market cap way up to a like a 1.2, 1.5 billion market cap. And then in one hour, one big fell swoop, they fell right back down to $190. They have come down and since are back up to $180. It's quite insane to consider this happened to a project that was initially over here at the start of the day at $500 million. And now it is, of course, down slightly. We are now down to under $500 million market cap. So please remember, this is a very important lesson moving into even the smaller old coins because they are even more susceptible for this to happen. But I wanted to point it out because, again, things can go up just as quickly. We can have hundreds or billions of dollars injected into a project like that, and it can come crashing down just as quickly. First thing I want to touch on today is these predictions coming out here from these large institutions. This is very important because, you know, like I've said before in the past, if we can get an idea of what these people are expecting in the cycle, we can kind of look at that as not the be all and end all, but a good indication of what might actually come true. And I had a comment on one of my recent videos I believe it was actually this video over here where I spoke about some of the predictions I will talk about today. By the way, I highly suggest you watch this video. I break down some of the predictions today in that one in much more detail. But the person said to me, Kyron, we shouldn't even be looking at these predictions because basically these guys are looking to get in the market themselves. They're looking to take advantage of when we are fearful or greedy to benefit themselves. And most definitely, I think it's very important we don't take what these people say as, again, the be all and end all most definitely with a grain of salt and so we can make better judgments ourselves. I don't think any sort of data is bad data as long as we consider all sides of the coin. The first prediction I want to mention here is one I again I mentioned a few days ago in a news video which is why it's very important you are up to date and subscribe for these daily news videos. Uh, this was a prediction here from Bitfinex where they said that they can picture the crypto market cap in 2024 going to 3.2 trillion dollars which is basically double where we are right now at about 1.6 trillion so this is important to remember because this isn't just bitfinex predicting this it's also bitwise these guys are one of the issuers of their own bitcoin etf and van eck another issuer of a bitcoin etf both of these issuers are very large in their own right van eck most definitely being the biggest these guys are have over a hundred billion dollars in assets under their management right now but they both said that Bitcoin will reach an all-time high sometime next year. Van Eck even going out and saying they predict it happening by 9th of November, which is exactly four years after the last Bitcoin all-time high of 69,000. And they also predict Bitcoin to possibly hit $100,000 in December of 2024. I can even say this year. Happy New Year to everyone. 
And we have Bitwise as well saying Bitcoin will trade above $80,000 setting a new all-time high. So all of these guys and what the general sentiment is, is Bitcoin will most definitely hit an all-time high this year. And of course, when that happens, the whole market will increase, which is why I think a 3.2 trillion dollar global market cap is most definitely on the cards some more predictions here from bitwise spot bitcoin etfs will be approved i think we can all agree that will definitely happen being one of the most successful etf launches of all time they do say as well coinbase's revenue will double beating wall street expectations they say jp morgan will tokenize a fund and launch it on chain as wall street gears up to tokenize real world assets we're going to look at these in comparison to Van x in a second here because they do line up kind of freakily right ethereum's revenue will be more than double to 5 billion as users flock to crypto applications ai assistants will use crypto to pay for things online hint hint fetch ai is a big one in this case a major upgrade to the ethereum blockchain will drive the average transaction cost below one cent i think that's probably going to have to happen on layer twos not the main chain itself and one in four financial advisors will allocate to crypto in client accounts by the end of 2024 that will obviously be propelled by the fact that we'll have Bitcoin ETS. Now, Van Eck have some of their own predictions. I've highlighted them in green here. I've left the more so boring ones out, if you want to call them boring. Uh, basically, watch this video again if you do want to see the full breakdown on it. I do, again, want to just touch on at least some of the ones they do agree with today. So they agree that the Bitcoin ETFs are going to bring in quite a bit of money in the short term. They predict about $40 billion over the next two years and a few billion over the first couple weeks of trading. They say that there will be an uneventful fourth Bitcoin halving in the sense that we won't crash. We will actually see prices stay quite steady, which is actually unhistoric of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin halving. Before we move up very quickly from there, I will touch more on this in a bit. Bitcoin's all-time high again in quarter four of 2024. Dominance of ETH layer twos post EIP 4844. Again, just like Bitwise said, they are looking to reduce the costs and improve the scalability for Ethereum. NFT activity will hit new peaks. Binance will relinquish the top position in spot trading, moving over to Coinbase. The stablecoin market cap will hit record highs. Emergence of a leading blockchain game. Solana will outperform Ethereum with resurging DeFi TVL. Meaningful adoption of decentralized physical infrastructure networks. And also a more common prediction here, corporate crypto holdings boosted by new accounting standards. This prediction right here was quite interesting, right? Because it was out of the blue. We did see that prediction number five from Bitwise agrees. So basically they're agreeing on the fact that JP Morgan or one of these large financial institutions will create their own blockchain network, which JP Morgan already does, but will somehow integrate that within crypto, like Web3 use case, okay? Whether it's, you know, natively, developed and deployed in crypto or whether it has a bridge to crypto that is very interesting to see as well so this will bring of course more institutional money into the space directly rather than through etfs so bitcoin price targets forty two thousand dollars 2023 close as bitcoin og says etf not priced in i'm going to give you both sides of the argument in this case i'm going to give you the argument of ogs that have said hey they aren't priced in we are going to still see this sort of like positive price movement on the day of the news and then I'm going to also give you the side of people who are saying it's going to be a sell the news type event. Truth be told, this is plain and simple anything in life for you all. No one damn knows what is going to happen, which is why I have said to you all in the most no financial way possible that you should be 70% exposed to crypto right now and 30% not exposed or at least somewhere around those ratios. To me, based on all my experience, this is the optimal, I guess, exposure to the crypto asset market that you really should have right now. If we continue going up, we don't have a correction, or at least if we do have a correction from new highs, well, what's that going to mean? That's going to mean that we're going to be buying even these altcoins today at more expensive prices with their cash. Yes, there's going to be retracements over the next 12 months. However, it's very important to know that you're not going to be buying bulk amounts anymore for really dirt cheap prices. The chances we have a true black swan event are diminishing. We do have a lot of overseas unfortunate events happening in you know third world countries and even in europe of course but you know things can happen on a dime but it's better you are still exposed i believe predominantly to the market now in that same regard i do think 20 to 30 percent in cash right now is a very smart move because if we actually have a sell the news event you can then capitalize likely with that 30 percent you do have in cash basically make up that 70 percent you have been dcaing over the last maybe few months here in your other old coins so you do have both sides of the fence now again we do have people like in this case adam black which is a crypto og i do believe adam had some part to play in 
the Bitcoin protocol itself. He invented a, a particular protocol that was used by Satoshi. He said the ETFs are not priced in. A lot of people don't really agree with Adam and his statements. He is a, a quite controversial figure in the space. But we do have a much more reputable man in the space, Whale Panda, a retired Bitcoin trader. ETF approval spikes us to $50,000, he predicts. And depending on how long it takes for the ETFs to launch, it will start selling off. Again, the ETFs just aren't approved and then instantly launched. This takes time, of course. He says maybe to a low of $40,000-ish if it takes a month before they actually launch. He doesn't see us going beneath $38,000. Now, gauging from what I've been talking about over the last few weeks with these daily news videos, I've seen a lot of experts predict us falling anywhere between the mid to higher $30,000 for Bitcoin in the worst case, even if we don't have these ETFs approved, right? So if we do have a negative side to deploy that cash, so you can kind of expect these levels to happen as well. Now, we also do have the alternative side, right? Bitcoin ETF approval won't trigger crypto market rally options data. So the options data from Greeks.live show that the implied volatility for January 12 options closely tied to the ETF decreased instead of rising. So Greeks Live asserted that the market has already considered the potential approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF, resulting in the actual approval having a limited impact on prices and volatility. Next up in the news, Bitcoin miners offload $129 million in BTC in a single day, sending reserves to the lowest point since May. So basically what happened is Miners send a whole bunch of Bitcoin out of their wallets onto exchanges. This typically means a potential sell event is due to come here. Of course, we can only track the verified miner wallets. So chances are most of the big boy wallets. And again, this doesn't indicate they are going to sell. It just means they're not holding Bitcoin in their main Bitcoin wallets anymore. They are onto exchanges, which means we could have a sell moment. It is kind of expected because again, typically speaking, Bitcoin miners do sell some of their Bitcoin at the time of the halving, like back here in uh, 2016. Bitcoin halving happens over here on the dotted blue line. And we do have a sort of retracement down 30% back over there. And more recently, the last cycle, we had a 12% drop as well before it kind of consolidated over here before you really went up about 7% down from that point. So this is very normal. It does happen. Not saying it will happen, but of course, miners have accumulated Bitcoin over the last few years at a set amount of Bitcoin. Then all of a sudden it is reduced by half, which means like, again, I use the analogy all the time. If you went to work tomorrow and your boss said to you, hey, Jimmy, I want you to keep doing the same work you're doing, but I'm going to pay you half. You're going to go, what the damn hell? I'm getting the hell out of here. So Bitcoin miners do the same thing. It's still just as hard to mine the Bitcoin but the reward is literally slashed in half. This, of course, does have a supply shock effect. But initially speaking, we do have a correction. The only difference is, from the information I've gathered, is that Bitcoin miners are particularly uh, more profitable right now on that balance sheet. So this might just simply be them preparing just to take some profit from the buy or sell the news event from these ETFs. We've also seen over here that most people, right, regular people are looking to actually go into a non-custodial type situation. So moving money off exchanges into their own Bitcoin wallets as well. We've seen down here, this red line represents 27,000 Bitcoin that was recently moved off exchanges. So most people, it looks like, are looking to hold their Bitcoin for the longer terms or just have a safer, I guess you will, not your keys, not your crypto type uh, ordeal. Now, we also have the hack news as well. Orbit Chain has reportedly been hacked for 81 and a half million dollars that is not chump change to say the least this comes from 30 million dollars in tether 10 million die 10 million usdc a whole bunch of rat bitcoin and a whole bunch of ethereum as well so i would just like to point it out as for all of you who are in some way shape or form you know using the orbit chain please be very well aware check your assets and make sure you haven't been hacked in this case now here's a bit of alpha for you all if you guys don't already know a big part of crypto and crypto being a bad thing is that you might make millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars but you got to almost pay the equivalent amount of back in tax right it is so annoying when you get you know you make a certain amount of money and then like literally half or a third of that is going to the tax man so in this case, this interesting article came up here from the block, NFT tax loss harvesting spikes as year-end deadline approaches. So there's a few protocols out there, out there, harvest art, unsellable NFTs, and sold incinerator are protocols designed for you to send in your 
useless NFTs for them to buy off you for like a few cents or a few dollars. And what you can do in that case is, let's say you bought the NFT for $10,000, you sell it for one cent. Basically all that $10,000 can then be used to offset the gain you've made on your other crypto assets for the financial year. So if you had to pay $10,000 in tax, for example, you sell off your NFT to these guys, they buy it, or even if a friend buys it off you, for example, you can then take that $10,000 loss and then remove that $10,000 gain so you don't pay tax, basically. Now, I get it before anyone goes, oh, this is a good idea. I might just buy NFTs when they're like really expensive. And then when it comes time to, you know, the bull run kicks off in that financial year, I can just sell it right? as, a, as a, you know, deduction on my tax bill. You don't want to purposely lose $10,000, $20,000, right? It's still better if you make that money and pay that back for the tax man. But this, you know, kind of uh, sort of philosophy can also be used as well for your crypto assets that you lose, not just NFTs, right? So your coins as well, if you have, you know, 10 really good performing assets, you sell them all and you sell one bad performing asset, it is actually beneficial you sell that bad performing asset because, not financial advice by the way, that would then also be a deduction on your tax bill as well, depending on of course how much you lost. So this is an interesting tactic I thought it would be worth mentioning because you can actually, you know, utilize this to benefit you, especially if the NFT itself has no project behind it anymore, they've abandoned it, or the altcoin itself, you may as well sell at the substantial loss. Again, not financial advice. And then, you know, offset the actual gains you do make. So with that being said, thank you everyone for watching today's video. And if you are one of the very lucky people that have made it this far, you are in luck because you can hit the like button right now and be rewarded with my praise and thanks. So with that being said, thanks again. I'll talk to you all soon. Take good care.